Good day, this is the 100 Zoom channel. In this video, I want to show you all all the ways to use binoculars. If this material aids you in fixing your binoculars, do not forget to give it a like and please subscribe to my channel for more helpful content. I have binoculars with prisms. In binoculars with roof prisms, everything is much more complicated. Since the majority of individuals possess outdated binoculars with poro prisms, there is an opportunity to acquire knowledge from watching this video. Yes, take a look. There are different binoculars, there are Japanese, there are German, there are more qualitative, less qualitative. The majority of high quality binoculars can be adjusted by rotating the rings that are situated on the objectives. If we currently possess at this particular location, the body and lens are situated right in the middle. Here is a ring that can be seen in the center. He has got one wall that is thicker, the other one is thinner. And the same goes for this building. One is rougher, the other is thinner. When inserting binoculars into the housing, you must insert them in a way that the adjusting ring coincided with the body of the lens itself. You see, make sure it doesn't stick out. Otherwise, you will not be able to insert it. And at what time will this lens, which has a ring, be placed inside the body of the binoculars, you start rotating this ring to make adjustments and achieve the desired focus. While scrolling, you notice a small bump, a step. Thus, it becomes apparent that you already have a lens in your possession. So here it is in the lens, moving in a circular motion. Both of them are moving. And that is the way you can ensure that your image appears as the most pleasant and visually appealing to your eyes. Actually, at the factories where binoculars are produced, they are not adjusted by eye, but on special collimators. The collimator machines are rather expensive. If someone in Ukraine states that they own a special contraption called a collimator, they are either not telling the truth, or they possess a very old Soviet one that only functions with those small binoculars, like the 8x30 or 6x30 models. I doubt anyone in Ukraine possesses universal collimators, as they can be priced at both three and four thousand dollars. So, you know, purchasing such an item for, let's say, $4,000, do you fully comprehend the amount of time and binoculars that would be required in order to repair and resell it with the goal of recouping the cost of this collimator? So, allow me to demonstrate to you visually how it is done using a fisheye lens. Please take a look, as we have here a crib that I would like to show you. The lens is housed in a separate casing, not the body of the binoculars, where the lens is located and there is also an external adjustment ring. They possess a pair of cavities. When this lens is inserted, the majority of these depressions are situated on the opposing side, facing one another. Then you scroll them so that two indents are positioned next to each other in close proximity. I have made a few final adjustments here, and I will now provide you with the details. Subsequently, hold the binoculars in front of your eyes, maintaining a distance of approximately 10 centimeters, and commence rotating together in this manner as described. When you scroll this on the right side you have, as an illustration, some tree for instance. The movement of the object is in a circular pattern like this. You must exert all efforts to ensure that this tree closely resembles the image on the left side as much as possible. The liver was pounding heavily. Then you take the left image upside down and scroll it as well, so that it aligns or is positioned precisely here at this point in the visual display. Two pictures, or in this one. Occasionally it occurs that, for instance, following deformation, subsequent to an impact, you find yourself in this position. So you're indicating that you are unable to combine these images in any way. Therefore, you already need to rely on prisms to assist yourself. Here's the deal. This is the first one. He is, in my opinion, the simplest and most reliable. Because it's a piece of cake. Just unscrew it here. Keep on scrolling. Moreover, I want to mention, there have been occasions when they sent me binoculars for repair as it caused double vision for me. And all because he somewhere fell and this pipe got a little loose, came out of the thread. Should have just unscrewed it and screwed it back in. That's it. And that's how the repair was finished. Maybe there's still some tweaking to do, but first and foremost, we need to see if there aren't any gaps in these areas. Another way to use binoculars is by using prisms. And here we have a few options. 
there are more reliable and less reliable ones. Look, these binoculars are not clean yet, but nonetheless, it is all about the way you tilt the prism and the perspective it provides. She has the ability to lean in different directions, similar to this prism, which is positioned on the side of the objective, but is oriented towards the eyepiece. Look, you see, there are screws in this specific location. When you tighten or loosen the adjustment mechanism here, the prism will tilt accordingly. This is quite risky, in my personal opinion because you can compress it and the prism will suffer damage, it will develop a chip. That is why I attempt not to tighten or unscrew these screws at all in such instances. I am striving to remove them from this location entirely and position folded aluminum foil in multiple layers on top of the item ensuring it is completely covered and sealed. The alternative choice for utilizing prisms is that there is a screw located in this particular place of interest. With the assistance it provides, you can tilt the prism in this specific direction when you twist it around. When unscrewing, the clamping spring applies pressure on the prism, causing it to tilt to the right until it fully touches the entire body with its plane surface. This ensures a secure and stable connection between the prism and the body, enhancing the functionality of the device. This particular option is considered to be less reliable because of the possibility that the screw may loosen slightly in this specific place. This is especially true in cases where you have a fully plastic binocular body and a metal screw. These are extremely budget-friendly Chinese binoculars, an extremely unreliable option, and in general, it is possible to have a plastic case. If you become excessively hot in the sun to the point where your body undergoes deformation, how much twisting can you endure in this state? Sufficiently strong, nothing will occur. Naturally, within reasonable limits, because if you possess everything with hemp more or less in a normal state, you don't require to excessively stretch it in one direction or another. The same principle applies to this location as well. You must search for the damn screw in this area, as it should be located somewhere nearby. I'll tell you how I, being the biggest, wear such binoculars. I'm trying to clean all the optics, then screw on the lens so that there's a cap here because if you plan to use the binoculars like this screwing in this spot then in this spot but this cap isn't attached yet then you'll have to unscrew the lens again put on the cap screw it on and maybe you won't tighten the lens as much as the first time your binoculars will double in magnification so i try to only screw or unscrew them with these prisms for adjusting focus Well, I painted it the way I painted it. Here's the deal. We have the picture in focus. That's how I approached it. Then it passes through a prism that is positioned closer to the eyes. Here is the thing that I want to emphasize. Through this prism, the image is guided into another prism, which is situated closer to the lens. And here is this very prism. And after that, it already enters into the eyes through the glasses that are worn on the face. So here I drew you a little diagram. It works for both the first and second option of existence with prisms. Look, you see the left and right halves of the prisms. Just like this is what the binoculars body looks like. That is, this part of the prism, this wall, it is located here on this side. Exactly at the point where the strap is attached. And this particular section of the prism is positioned on this specific side. In this location, where two halves are already converging. And in this case, for example, we have two pictures. The binoculars are doubling, left half, right half, and we need to bring them together, right here at this specific point in order to ensure accurate vision. Move this image down and to the right, and the right image down and to the left. What do we need to do? Let's check the diagram. In order to shift the position of the left image downwards and towards the right, it is necessary to tilt the image from the specific side of the prism where the number one is located, thereby adjusting its orientation and achieving the desired movement. Now I will demonstrate. Here's this prism. You have to tilt it in this specific direction. So, in this step, you need to screw in the screw or place foil underneath it from this particular side of the prism to ensure proper alignment. Similarly, on the right side we require, as you can see, a solitary one in the same manner as this. There's also a one here. We also need to lean in that direction. Sometimes, you know, here you can move wherever you want 
well, wherever you want, just diagonally. You're unable to go up, down, left, or right. For instance, you need to depict the image in this manner like this, as an example. Here is this topmost point. Well, unfortunate circumstances occur. We require, as you can see, for it to move both here and there in order to achieve the desired outcome. So three, let's see, three. What is three? Three, that is it. We tilt the prism that is closer to the objective, this prism, and push it from the side of the binoculars wall to adjust the view. The side of the binoculars for this prism is situated right here. Thus, the slope under number three can be found either at the location where you need to clamp, or in this particular location, for the left half or for the right half of the binoculars. There are times when you look through binoculars and it's like you're closing one eye then the other and you have an understanding that your left image is located on this side and the image on the right is positioned on this side of the screen. So the image seems to be going diagonally. The binoculars double vision really badly. This scheme will already be applicable to the image that you currently have on the right side but still, if you need to relocate this image, which is positioned on the right side somewhere else, you still need to observe these arrows to determine where to guide it. So now, for instance, the subsequent kind of modification, namely the subsequent kind of prism attachment in binoculars. Look, here is a plate that has a prism on one side of the lens and on the other side of the eyepiece, serving as a visual aid for observing and analyzing light. She is stuck, attached, it is not that important anymore. Do not think that you can simply screw something in and then unscrew it and nothing will happen to you in the process without any consequences. Things are going to change around here. She is a total babe in this place. So when you tighten or loosen all these screws, this plate with prisms, for example, relative to the lens, it starts to bend like this, creating a fascinating and mesmerizing visual effect. Well, so you guys understand, here it is. So, like, I won't draw you exact diagrams because, well, it can be different, you know. And definitely, if you tighten this screw right here, your image will definitely move in some direction. I cannot tell you precisely which one. Just got to grab a pair of binoculars, look through them, and understand. So, for instance, there's a right half, the right image is on the right. And to the left, when you look at the left half, the image would be like if it were a little more to the left and, for example, down. Well, then you take and commence screwing or unscrewing one of these screws, to be more precise, one pair of these screws, in order to adjust or disassemble the object that you are working on. You have a clear vision of where your image is going. How can I start utilizing all of this? I commence by tightening these screws with springs almost all the way, but then I release them a little bit by the same number of turns, making sure not to overdo it and maintaining the proper balance in the process. For example, I spun around halfway and then let go of this one, this one, and this one. These screws are all messed up. They seem to be working in the opposite direction. These particular ones that have springs pressed, whereas those specific ones that are equipped with screws push away from the body. So you tighten one screw and then make sure to tighten the other one too. By doing this, it actually pushes away this plate, ensuring that the whole system is securely fastened in place and will not come loose or detach. Next, we begin to tighten each of these screws individually. You should feel that they all rotate with a slightly greater resistance. This is because if it spins too effortlessly, if you leave it as is and continue to use binoculars, it will simply unscrew on its own, fly around the body, and cause damage to the prisms. More like that, unless you have any questions in the comments, I will provide you with a little more information. Because I tried different things and tried to draw something, well, and always, so that you understand when you squeeze somewhere, the platform essentially bends like this. She has the ability to bend in both directions, depending on the level of springiness of these objects. So here you simply have to give it a try. I will not draw a specific scheme, another approach to adjust the prisms and fine tune the results. Some manufacturers, and there are quite a few of them, like for example this Japanese binoculars, and Soviet binoculars, and German ones, have a mounting place for the prism of such a size that it can be moved in this direction and that direction. Well, same here. The prism that is closer to the objective lens. Now let's take a look at the diagram. 
Here we have a camera lens. The image goes through a prism that is closer to our eyes, to the eyepieces. On the diagram, arrow number one. So like this prism is moving, or we're moving in this direction. So then our image will also essentially be moving in the same direction, upwards and to the left. And the opposite side, that's number two, right here, I reckon you got that. Regarding the account, there is this prism you see, that is closer to the objective, but it is looking at the eyepiece, you know. Maybe someone here won't understand, so let me explain in more detail. Here's this drawing. This prism is painted as if we're looking at binoculars from this side. So, when the arrow under number 3 moves, we move the prism here, like this, we move the prism, if we flip the binoculars. So this will be similar to us relocating in this direction, I believe you have grasped it at this point. Let us move the prism in this direction, and the image will also move to the left and downwards. And in the left half, essentially, a reflection that mirrors itself. And this is the scheme of using binoculars with mirrors. I've seen binoculars like that. Only Yukon makes them with mirrors instead of prisms. I possess a video. You have the option to view it separately to understand what this Yukon is all about and how to utilize it. There is a small scheme at hand. We are not dealing with any prisms in this scenario. We just need to tighten or loosen these screws as required. And so the image will move in some direction. Thanks again to everyone for watching the video. I hope you didn't mess it up excessively, watched it in its entirety. Now, at the conclusion, I will insert some photographs.